So this short video is going to be about JavaScript closures, that mystical thing that you can find a hundred different definitions for what the word means, but it's really actually a very simple concept, and it's all about understanding variable scope and variable state inside of JavaScript files. So I've created a sample page here where I've got uh, a global variable called g, just for reference. Then I've got a function called fred, which is also a global function. It's waiting for a value to be passed in. And you can see right here, we're going to pass the number 42 into that. And then I create a variable called str. It's going to be a string hello. So both num and str, these two variables here, are local. Um, whether I declare it inside here or it's passed in as a parameter, these are local to this function fred. They only exist inside of this function fred. Now I've created another function here which is inside of fred. Um, it's a function expression. It's just going to be uh, logging some stuff to the console. We'll come back and talk about that in a minute. Um, so there's a function here. Now if I were to use either of these variables, num or str, which are local to this function, if I was to use them, like here, inside of this function, this becomes a closure. So we'll come back to what that means, but that is a closure. Just the fact that I've taken a variable from here, used it inside of here, I've created a reference back to this variable. So there's a second example here. I'm referencing a button on my page and I'm adding a click listener to it and I'm referencing that variable num again. Now down here at the bottom, still inside of the function fred, I'm going to call the function something else once, which will make these two console commands run. And then I'm going to add 5 to the number and I'm going to change the string to be goodbye instead of hello. And then I'm going to call this function again. So it's going to run these two console commands twice. So here's the page. I'll refresh just to show. Yes, there we go. So something else 42. This is my console log command right here from line 13. And then this one, console dir. This is an interactive listing of the object. So I pass the name of the function in here. And with log, it's going to write out a string equivalent of whatever the object is. This actually gives me an interactive tree that I can go inside of. So you can see I can look inside. Okay, the function. And there is an object down here, function scope. So I can look to see what is inside this function scope. I haven't declared anything inside of here. I haven't passed anything into the function. We can see it's nothing here. But I did use this variable num. Even though it's not declared anywhere inside of here, JavaScript went up one more level to the parent function to look to see if there was something called num. If I look in the scope, you can see I've got a closure, and num is part of it. And there's the value of it after this script runs. So num is a closure. It is a variable that it was created outside of my current function, but I have reference to it. Because I used it inside my function, JavaScript went up one level and said, yeah, here's a thing called num. I'm not going to delete it. When the function fred is done, I'm going to hang on to it so that I can use it again and again inside of here. So it's like a, a permanent reference to a variable but from a different scope. And that's really what closures are all about. So the first time this runs, num is my 42, which was the value that got passed in. So 42 got sent to here. And then the first time something else runs, this will be 42. Then I'm adding 5 to it and calling the function again, which is why I get this 47. Now inside my click function, what I'm doing is I'm saying, get the value of num and add 1 to it after I write out this click with the number. So each time I click on here, I'm going to be incrementing the variable, the value of the variable num. So it's not just a snapshot in time. It's not like I'm taking the value of num 
from here, the 42, and I'm using that inside here, and I'm using that inside here, it's actually hanging on to that outer variable. So any changes that happen to that outer variable will be remembered inside of here. Sometimes that's great. Sometimes you want to do things like keep track of the number of clicks that have happened. So here, if I had several buttons, so let me duplicate this line and add this functionality for buttons 2 and 3. And we're going to do the exact same thing with all three buttons. I'm going to copy, paste, paste button 2 and button 3. So all three of them are going to be referencing the variable num. All three of them are going to be incrementing that variable num. So it's 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. They're all sharing this variable. Even though it belonged to their parent function, we've created a closure, which meant the value or the, the variable itself has been bound to this function. The parent function can't get rid of that variable. OK, that's great. But what if you wanted to do something like running through a loop? So if I come back in here and I scrap this, change this to buttons, and I say query selector all, I'm going to get all of my buttons. And I want to loop through them. And I want to use the numbers 1, 2, 3 associated with each one. So if I say OK, actually, I don't even need to do that. I'll just use my loop counter. So var i equals 0, i is less than buttons length i plus plus. Great. All right, so I'm going to loop through each one of the three buttons on my page. And for each one, I'm going to add a click listener. So effectively, this code right here, put this inside of my loop. And this will become buttons sub i. There we go. I is what I want to write out each time. So each time I click on a button, I want it to say 1, 2, or 3, depending on which button is clicked. So looks like it makes sense. Add an event listener to the first button, my first time through the loop. When the person clicks, I run the function, which gets the variable I. Now I is going to be at this moment in time, 0. Next time through the loop, I'm going to say take the second button, add a click listener, and write out the value of i. But what's going to happen here is we're actually going to be creating a closure. I'm going to comment these ones out just so we don't see them on the page. Refresh. Button 3. OK, yeah, 3. But hold on a second, going through this loop, 0, 1, and 2 should have been my values. Let's check the other ones. 3, 3, 3. So it doesn't matter how many times I click or which button I click on, I is saved. And they're all sharing the same value of I. A closure has been created here. We have created a function right here. This is a function. And by using the variable i, we've created a closure. And we're keeping a reference to this variable i that was created outside of us. So it was created as part of the function Fred. But now this function is keeping reference on that variable i. If I want to do something where I've got this is 0, this is 1, and this is 2 when I click on them, I need to create a separation between the i variable and the 
value that I currently has. And this is where we can use an IIFE, an immediately invoked function expression. All right, so I've put parentheses around my function. So this is going to be invoked immediately because of this. And then there's the end of the ad event listener. So every time I run through this, I'm running this function. Then I'm going to return a function. which will do this. So the click has to have a function to call. That's why I have to return a function from here so that the click can use that. This variable i still points to this one, even though it's two levels, two levels deep now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pass in my variable i. Right here, I'm going to have a new variable for it, and then I'm going to use it here. So this is going to take the i and pass it to the function that is running right away. So at the moment that I'm inside this loop, going through the first time, this function runs for the first time. Zero gets passed into here. My second time through the function, i is going to have the value of one the value of 1 is going to be passed into this new variable x, which will be placed inside here. So this is creating a closure, but the closure points to this variable, which has the value of i. It's not pointing to the variable i. It's got the value of i. So running through the loop now three times. Zero, 1 and 2. There we go. Now we have the values that we want. Because we ran this function immediately, and we captured the value of the i and put it into a new variable. Now, I could have used the same variable letter here. It wouldn't have made a difference. I just do this different variable just to help illustrate the concept. See, it still works, even if I used i, because in here, we're creating a new local variable i. So JavaScript sees this as a new variable that only exists inside of this function. But just to make things a little bit more clear, here's my inner i, and that's the value. So if I used i, every time through, it's going to be 3 because it was 0, 1, 2, and then this runs. This i++ means after it gets to the end of the loop right here, it increments the value. So as soon as it gets to this line, i actually becomes 3. 0, 1, 2, 3 on its exit. It gets to be incremented one more time. So this will be 3, but this will be the actual value that we want. There we go. 3, that's our i, our counter variable, and 0, 1, 2. So there's closures in use. Sometimes you want to have the closure and you want to have that variable that's being shared. Other times you just want the value of the variable. And if you want the value of the variable, then you're going to have to do something like this, an IIFE where you're passing into a new variable. The new variable cre creates a new scope and that's how you capture that value.